Good morning. We're here at Craftco's Manufacturing Plant. We're going to do some troubleshooting on a diesel burner. These burners are found in all of Craftco's diesel-fired melters. So we'll walk through some troubleshooting ideas for you and help you get your burner back running and back to work. So one of the more common issues is running the machine out of fuel and needing to bleed the burner. If you have air in the line, the burner will not fire correctly. So we're going to show you how to do that. You'll see that our burner is on a bench, but you can easily bleed the burner in the machine in the field. Down on the bottom of the fuel pump, you'll see the small bleeder valve. All you're going to want to do is crack that open and then go ahead and turn the machine to on and turn the burner on. Once it goes to start, it'll start spitting a little bit of air. And once you have a good flow of fuel, you can shut that off and the burner will ignite. Another one of the issues that we see if you have bled the burner and it will fire but then shuts right back down, it could be your cat eye. So next we're going to show you how to locate the cat eye and clean it and make sure that it is working properly. Okay, on the Beckett burner, your cat eye is going to be located underneath your igniter module. So first off, you're going to want to loosen the screws and then move the little tabs back and the module will hinge open. The cat eye is located right between your spring igniters. Now we want to pull the uh, cat eye out. It just unplugs and then uh, you can look down in the cat eye there and see if the front of it is really dirty or if you can see the, the little uh, printed circuit board there if there's any cracks or distortions in that circuit board that will not allow it to see the flame and will not let the burner start so at that point that would have to be replaced. If you're just cleaning it, you can plug it right back in and then close the module up, making sure that the tabs are pulled back into place and your screws are locked back down. You'll need to make sure that these are locked down tight. This will allow those springs to make contact with the igniter and make sure you're getting full spark down to your igniter. Here's a picture of a really bad cat eye. Uh, as you can see, the whole front of it is really cloudy and this burner probably was having a little back burn inside of it. The housing is melted a little bit, which is telling us that the burner was not functioning properly possibly leaking fuel in the burner and igniting the fuel and melted a little bit of this housing. This cat eye here obviously would need to be replaced as it, uh, it will not function properly, will not let the burner light correctly. So next off we're going to check our igniter. First thing we're going to do is loosen the screws and let the igniter pivot back. And now we're going to take the fuel line off. And then we'll take the retaining nut off, which will allow the, the uh, electrode to come up out of the uh, burner box so it can be inspected. To get the electrode out, once the retaining nut is off, just slide it in to the interior of the burner and then just carefully pull it up out. So one of the main things you want to check is make sure that there's no residue on the ends of the electrode where the igniter touches. 
and then also inspect the ceramic covering around the electrodes. If there's any cracks, you'll want to replace those electrodes as the cracks will let it bleed off the electricity. Then we're going to want to make sure that the electrodes are set properly and you can see in the manual uh, the exact measurement. Uh, there's also a gauge for checking those. You'll want to make sure if, if it needs adjustment you can loosen the screw on the top and move the electrodes back and forth uh, to set it and then also pivot it to make sure it's set in the proper distance from the nozzle. The nozzle on the front should also be inspected. That just screws out of the brass housing. There is a small filter on the back of the nozzle that should be checked to make sure there's no residue blocking the fl flow of the fuel. These nozzles should be checked at least once every 500 hours or once a year. They can also, uh, you can replace those. There is uh, a number printed right on the nozzle. You'll want to make sure you have the proper nozzle for the size of machine you have. Okay, now that we're all set, this is all ready to go back in. You just carefully put the igniter back into the, or the electrode back into the housing. It will slide down into the nose there, and then the uh, fuel fitting will come through the side of the burner housing. And then you'll want to put the retaining nut on. Once you have the retaining nut on, before you put the fuel filter on, you're going to want to take the gauge and check the air tube on the front of the burner, making sure that it is in proper adjustment. The gauge should fit right up against the, the nozzle, and then the veins of the burner tube should come up to the sides of the gauge. If it does need to be adjusted, there is a screw right beside the retaining nut that can be loosened and the whole igniter can be moved back and forth to set it properly. So once you get the, the retaining nut on, go ahead and reinstall your fuel line making sure it's snug but do not over tighten it. When you're ready to fire the burner the first time you'll want to check and make sure you have uh, a good seal and you're not leaking any diesel fuel from that. Once that's completed the next item is to check the springs on the, the bottom of the igniter. That's what makes contact with your electrodes. So make sure that they're not compressed and they they make good contact with the the electrodes. When you close the lid, it should be sprung up just a little and you'll have to push it down to set the retaining tabs. Tighten those back up and you should be ready to fire your burner up. One of the other things we hear from the customers is their burner is putting out a lot of black smoke. So next we're going to show you how to adjust the air band and the air shutter to clean up the burner and get it burning cleaner. So the adjustment on the air band can be made while the machine is running and your burner is running. The more you open it, you'll want to watch your exhaust on your stack for the burner and it should clean that up as you open it up. Once it, the black smoke kind of goes away, then that's where you're going to want to stop. You don't want to open it all the way up just to where the smoke goes away and that'll show that your burner is burning cleaner now. Once you have that set, then reinstall the retaining screw and tighten it up so it stays into position.
Right now we've got the burner running. As you can see, it's a good defined flame coming out. What I'm gonna do is adjust the, close up the air a little bit, and you're gonna see how the flame starts to get real lazy and it's not very well defined. And you're gonna see on a melter, you're gonna see black smoke coming up off that flame. So again, that's why the having the air adjustment uh, correct is very important. So now I'm gonna turn it back down. We'll get it a little more proper. And now you can see how the flame is very defined and is burning properly. Next, we're gonna show you how to check your power going into your burner. If you have your machine in the on position and the burner is in the on position and you have a red light on in the control box, but you're not getting any response from the burner, we're gonna show you how to check the electric and the power going into the DC controller. First off, we wanna just talk about a couple of different tools that you can test with would be a 12 volt testing light or a volt ohm meter that can check the power going into your DC controller. All right, first you want to do with your switch on in the control box is making sure that you have power going into your red wire and your white wire. So as you can see here, we're touching the red wire and we've got a light indicating that we have power going into the red wire. Now we're gonna check the white wire. And again, we have power going in. So we know we have power going to our DC controller. So next we're gonna check the DC controller. So now we're gonna go ahead and start checking some of the elements of the DC controller. Again, with the power in the on position, you can check the fuses, making sure that we have power running through both fuses, so that's telling us that our fuses are in good shape. Then we want to make sure that all the wire nuts are good and tight, all the connections are tight inside the DC controller. So if we have determined that the DC controller is bad, you'll want to change it. Just making sure when you undo your wire nuts and put the new one in, that all your black wires go together, all your white wires, and then these are all color-coded. You can see that they just match up and these all just plug into your DC controller. New DC controllers all come with wiring guides, so this is an easy change out. So now that we've tested our fuses, we wanna make a visual inspection all around the inside of the DC controller, making sure that there's no burn marks or anywhere where it might've shorted out internally. If you see something like that, then the DC controller needs to be replaced. Another key element is making sure that the battery is fully charged. It needs to have 14 volts going into the DC controller or it will not let the burner fire. So on our older machines, you'll wanna also check uh, power going from the battery to the solenoid. And this solenoid will be mounted on the frame down in the burner area. You'll have battery coming in on one side and power going out to your burner. So if you're not getting power at your burner plug, this would be the next place to check to make sure you've got power going into your solenoid. If you have it going in but not coming out, then the solenoid needs to be replaced. And this will only be on the older units, probably two years old or older. Next thing we're gonna check is if you've got power going into your burner, but you're still not getting it to fire, we're gonna show you how to check the burner coupler that runs between the blower motor and the fuel pump to drive the fuel into the burner. So the first thing we wanna do is take out the two bolts that uh, 
hold the burner blower into position. This is one of the easiest ways to get to the coupler. So once you take those loose, pull them off, you're going to be able to just grab the blower and slowly pull it out and pivot it to the side, which will give you access to the drive coupler. So you're gonna to wanna to visually inspect the drive coupler, make sure that the two ends are in good shape. If you've had an issue with the burner that the, uh, you were getting a little back burn uh, and a little fire in the burner, the uh, coupler can melt. This is just a, uh, a plastic coupler. So it could melt or the ends uh, get distorted to where they're, they're not driving it properly. Uh, also, one thing you can check too is your blower motor. Make sure that it spins freely and that uh, there's no issues with that. If, you, uh, if you've got a bad blower motor, that will not let it drive the fuel pump also. So after we check to make sure it's in good shape, then you'll go ahead and install the uh, coupler back into the, the uh, housing there, putting the orange end to the fuel pump. And you'll notice that on these, they are keyed, so they'll only go in one way. And that is also something you wanna check, just to make sure that that's not rounded out uh, and it's driving the uh, the fuel pump properly. So you just reinstall it with again the orange end going to the fuel pump and making sure that it slides onto the shaft properly and then you'll have to align the shaft on your blower motor and it will probably take a little finessing to get it to slide in. Probably got it on the first shot there. So now you just uh, reinstall your bolts, tighten it all up, and you're good to go. This is also something that should be checked every year when you do basic burner maintenance uh, before you start up for the year. Again, every, uh, every 500 hours or once a year. Uh, you can also look down through the top of your burner there and through the blower squirrel cage there and inspect it that way also.